Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining our masterclass on uh, tourism today. Uh, my name is Karam, and I'm an education consultant here at Education Basket, uh, which is an educational uh, consultancy agency that operates in the MENA region. So uh, today I'm joined by Professor uh, Navarro from University Antonio de Nebrija, uh, who holds a PhD in economics and business administration from the University of uh, Alcala. Uh, previously, he uh, obtained his executive MBA at uh, the Instituto de Empresa in Madrid, specializing in operations and uh, production. Uh, his doctoral work focused on the application of the foundations of the complexity paradigm to the theory of the firm with the aim of formulating new theoretical basis and methodologies to explain the behavior of uh, the firm. Um, he is currently a teacher in the Department of Tourism at uh, Nebriha University, where he directs the combined MBA uh, program. Uh, prior to joining the university, he has developed his professional career as an international business consultant, uh, a sector in which he has 20 years of experience as a consult consultant specializing in uh, the strategic transformation uh, of public and administrations uh, and has held various positions of uh, responsibility. Um, he has also been uh, founder and CEO of several companies in, in the engineering, transport, e-commerce, and uh, business consulting sectors. So today we're going to be talking about a few uh, points uh, regarding the uh, hospitality and tourism. And these will include uh, the growing relevance of the tourism industry on a global scale the factors that uh, shape modern tourism, including the new tourist and destinations, uh, the big trends that will transform tourism in the coming years, um, and lastly, the professions uh, with the most future in tourism. So I uh, hope you enjoy our masterclass today, and if there are any questions, we would definitely be uh, glad to answer them at the end. Uh, also, please note that uh, this webinar will be recorded and you will be able to access it on all uh, our platforms. So uh, now over to you, Professor Navarro. Uh, Professor, if you yes. please. Yeah. Okay. yeah, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, so you already uh, mentioned, um, we are going to spend about 30 to 40 minutes talking about the opportunities of uh, tourism as a global industry. So we are going to highlight um, the importance of the tourism industry uh, in the world. Uh, we are going to refer to the different trends that um, the tourism industry is showing up um, uh, globally. And of course, we are going to link all these um, uh, issues regarding the industry and the importance in terms of economics and uh, business uh, to the studies in tourism. Um, you will see at the end of the presentation that tourism is a thriving industry around the world, but it is also an industry that, that is in high demand of young professionals, uh, professionals with a very specific profile and with specific skills and uh, we hope that uh, this masterclass uh, is going to motivate you to follow the developments of um, the tourism industry in the future. And maybe why not to choose the tourism as your future career industry? I hope that uh, if you have any question, of course, regarding the industry, or you are already thinking to focus on the tourism in your next career, of course, uh, I don't know if, if, if we have planned for any interaction between me and the uh, attendants, but I, I will be glad to, to answer any questions uh, in this regard, okay? So let me first introduce me, myself, although uh, uh, I was already introduced um, by the host. Uh, I'm Professor uh, Francisco Javier Navarro at the um, School of Tourism in Nebrija University, located in Madrid, Spain. Um, I've been for 15 years, uh, an executive for different uh, companies in different industries with different roles in executive roles. Um, of course, tourism 
has been one of these industries. And I've been a CEO and entrepreneur myself in different also industries like transport, tourism, e-commerce, as, as you already stated. Uh, at the moment, I am uh, the director of graduate studies in tourism for the School of Tourism in Nebrija, uh, with a PhD in economics and business management uh, in Alcala. Alcala is a very old city close to Madrid in Spain, and an executive MBA for uh, one of the main um, business schools also in, in Spain. So, uh, uh, having made this uh, sort of the introduction of myself, I'm going to present to you this uh, agenda for today. We are mainly going to talk about uh, very, uh, very, very beginning th um, things. Uh, I mean, uh, we are going to start from zero as if, if you didn't have any knowledge about tourism. So we are going to start by uh, a definition of what is tourism and what is not tourism, why tourism is important today. So I am going to, uh, deliver many, many figures uh, regarding the importance in terms of economics and business of the tourism industry today. Uh, we are going to also uh, explain some of the benefits that tourism brings to countries, to cities, and to communities, so that you realize the power uh, and the strength of tourism as an industry. And of course, we are going also to uh, make some introduction to the main challenges of uh, modern tourism. After that, we are going to uh, give you an idea of what the tourism industry, industry is made up, what are the main players in the industry. You will see this is a very complex industry made of very different types of businesses. Uh, I myself question many times why we talk about a sector or, or an industry. Um, there is a, also a uh, uh, scholars debate about this uh, about this this thing. I mean, why is the, is tourism an industry? Should we call tourism a sector uh, in terms of the many many different types of businesses and and, and sectors that are, that compose the tourism thing? And of course, we are going to talk a little bit about the next trends in the tourism industry, and the, that will be a very good point to uh, link the trends and the uh, benefits and challenges of tourism with the studies in tourism, okay? And how from our university, Nebrija University in Madrid, we can give you an um, answer, or we can, we can give you an opportunity uh, to fulfill your uh, expectations in terms of a study um, uh, tourism in the future, okay? So let's move on. Let's start by defining tourism. I wanted to start by uh, defining tourism because um, this is one funny thing that I experiment every time I have my first year students at the university when I ask the first day, well, what do you think is tourism? And it's, it's not always easy for uh, you know people that is not a professional in the industry or people who has not any contact with uh, a tourism professional to know what are the boundaries, what are the limits of tourism. So I want to give you this uh, very easy uh, definition of tourism. It's uh, the, let's say, it's the official uh, definition of tourism, is the official in terms of the UN tourism, the United Nations uh, tourism definition. And it says something like this, is to visit a place for at least one night, but less than one year, for pleasure, vacation, business, and other professional or personal purposes, provided that no remunerated activities carry out in the place visited. So you will see here in this definition that we have some very, very specific um, traits for tourism. One is that we need to move, we need to go to a place, we need to visit a place. But uh, it also requires in order to be called tourism, that we spend at least one night. So if we go, let's say, in the morning to our city, uh, neighbor city, uh, for example, in, we live here in Madrid, or you live maybe in uh, Istanbul, and you visit Ankara um, in the morning, and you come back to Istanbul at night, this is not tourism, because you didn't spend a whole night there. Okay, But also, you have a maximum in terms of uh, how many days 
you, you, you can spend doing tourism and, the, and this is one year. So if you spend some time in a place and you exceed one year, maybe because of course you are not doing tourism, you are living or you have a residency in that place, then you are not, you are no longer practicing tourism. Okay, you maybe are a resident in, in one place. So we have this uh, maximum and minimum uh, consideration in terms of time. So no less than one night and no more than one year. And the second trait about uh, tourism is the motivation. Okay, and uh, as you as you can see, the motivation can be very wide. You can uh, go to, uh, in uh, doing tourism because you are on a vacation, but also because of business reasons. Okay, or maybe you are on a pleasure trip to somewhere. So it, it, uh, you are an executive visiting Istanbul or you are an executive visiting New York and you spend one week and you are considered a tourist, maybe a business tourist, but you are considered a, a tourist in terms of the statistic. So this is, as you can see, our industry. This is where we should be uh, focusing on today. Um, uh, so it's a multi-profile, uh, complex industry uh, because everything that it contemplates in a experience regarding a trip for more, one, for more than one day, but less than one year, should be considered within the limits of tourism. So you have here in my next slide, um, um, another differentiation between tourism and leisure and recreation, because these are also terms that uh, many times uh, are confusing for the newcomer to, to tourism. So, uh, maybe I can ask you, do you think leisure and recreation are the same as tourism? Some, maybe some of you say, yeah, yeah more, it sounds synonymous to me, or maybe they are the same to me from an intuitive point of view, right? But let, let's see the difference again. So it's, everything is a matter of time and how you spend your time. Uh, let's say we have 24 hours a day in, in our in our. Uh, current living day. So we can spend our time in the different things. We can spend our time in working or we can spend our time in leisure activities. That's maybe uh, you can also spend your time in a third different type of activities. But let, let, let's concentrate in the work and leisure uh, activities, right? So leisure is the type of activities that you we, we, we can define leisure as the time we are not working. Okay, so uh, I think this is maybe more clear to you. Uh, you, you are working for an uh, enterprise, you are working for your own business, you are working for a university, whatever activity you are focusing on as a worker. And uh, every time I'm not working, I am on leisure. I can dedicate my time to visit a museum, to visit my friends, or whatever activity I want to, to, to focus on, right? So, uh, Professor, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yes. We can just see the first slide. Um, are you scrolling through the slides at the moment? Yes, I'm on the second one. Yeah. So you can see it. Uh, no, maybe we, you, we can uh, share the screen again, please. Yeah, let me. Uh... Okay, perfect. Now we can see the second slide. Yes. Okay, so I will. I will um, reduce the size of. Um... Of this, so you can see. Okay. So, um, leisure is the time I'm I'm not working for for somebody or for myself, right? And um, uh, this leisure type of activities, um, some of these leisure activities can be uh, recreational. Okay, they are joyful activities. Uh, activities that I uh, choose as a voluntarily uh, to spend at home or to spend out of home. So we have this, let's say, next differentiation between tourism and leisure or recreation. That means that only the recreational activities that are spent out of home uh, can be considered travel and tourism, but also the working uh, time for reason of business, as, as we saw um, before in the slide before, can also be considered 
uh, travel and uh, tourism, right? So let's just share some, some examples. For example, uh, an international student coming to Madrid, what do you think it would be? It will be a uh, leisure activity, recreational activity, or tourism activity. Or maybe a professor like myself visiting Istanbul for a you know a academic conference. What do you think? It will be leisure, recreation, travel, tourism, work? Or you are a professional, or you are visiting a client in Barcelona. This is the second city in, in Spain. Okay. So as we can see, an student uh, is um, uh, an activity um, spend more than one day, maybe less than one year. Um, is is an activity uh, considered inside the tourism concept. The same as a professor visiting a conference. She he, she or he is working um, uh, in his activity in the conference, so he will be considered a tourist. The same as a keep visiting a client in Barcelona. This is also business reason. So uh, this is also not a recreational, nor a leisure, but a working activity uh, spent for one more within one day, less than one year. So that will be considered travel and tourism. Okay, so I hope we everything uh, share already a, a common um, idea of what tourism means and uh, the different type of activities that are contemplated uh, under the umbrella of, of tourism. So let me let me continue. Of course, uh, I, I'm I'm going to share also some of the nice photographs from from Spain. This is uh, the city of Valencia in in the east coast of of, of Spain. It's a big city, uh, absolutely successful city in terms of uh, the tourism industry. Uh, you can see here the Oceanographic Museum, which is a already European or well uh, renowned place. Uh, in the city with millions of uh, visitors around the world every year. So if maybe some of you already know Valencia. If not, of course, uh, let me uh, let me uh, you know suggest to all of you to have a trip to, of course, Spain, of course, Madrid, but also to to Valencia. So I'm I'm going to concentrate now on uh, highlighting the importance of tourism in terms of uh, the social and economic impact. So I want to share this uh, map with you. Uh, this is an, an, old, an old map. It's a map from uh, 2017 uh, statistics. But um, as you can see, it, it gives you a very clear uh, first sight idea of uh, what, uh, what are the countries in the world uh, where tourism is a, you know, a very important industry. Um, if I ask you, what is the main country in the world in terms of the tourism industry? Uh, what will be your 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 answer? Maybe you already know. Okay, so we have the United States. This is in terms of revenue from a tourist by region. So that means that in 2017, United States uh, received uh, nothing more, nothing less than 211 billion dollars um, as revenue from um, tourists. So second uh, second country in the world, anybody knows? Second country in the world is, let me say, Spain. Uh, Spain is a well, uh, far, far well uh, um, from, from the United States in terms of revenue. We are talking about $68 billion in revenue from uh, the, the tourism industry in Spain, followed by France. 81 billions um, and Italy 44 billion. So as you can see, we have a tourism industry that is highly dispersed around the world with a heavy, uh, heavy concentrated in, in, in countries of Europe, uh, like Spain, France, Italy, United Kingdom, Germany, but also with uh, a growing uh, uh, industry in terms of revenue in Asia, like India, 27 billion, Thailand, uh, 50, uh, 57 billion, Japan, 34 billion. So we have a very uh, increasingly growing um, industry in, uh, in Asia. Um, where is the tourism industry still underdeveloped? Well, as you can see, we have the African country, I mean, the African continent uh, with a very underdeveloped 
uh, uh, revenues in terms of tourism, leading by Egypt with 80 billion in uh, 2017, and Morocco, 7 billion, of course, South Africa, 9 billion. And we also have a strong development coming up from the Latin American countries, uh, which, you know, the, 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 those are countries that have been doing a very uh, successful strategies in terms of tourism in the, in the last few years. So we have, as you can see, a very uh, worldwide spread industry around the world with a heavy concentration in um, uh, European countries where tourism is absolutely uh, a, a key industry in terms of uh, socioeconomic development, but also in the United States, North America, I forgot to mention Australia, and um, Middle East, of course. Uh, and don't let me forget uh, the, 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 uh, the Middle East with the uh, United Arab Emirates with 20, 21 billion uh, revenue, which is a very, um, very good figure. And as, as, as I told you, these are figures for 2017. Um, so these are figures that are very, very old, but uh, it gives you an overall uh, overview of where the tourism is concentrated and where it's important and where it's growing. Uh, but last figures from 2023, I, I could say these figures have multiplied by 1.5 or even 2 in most of the countries. So we have Spain with over 80 million from 68 to 81 billion dollars in revenue, which is, you know, more than uh, one point something, uh, 1.5 maybe. Um, France uh, is already not such below Spain like, like you can see here, but uh, even we are equally or, or above France, above Spain. And the United States has multiplied uh, this figure uh, also, so we have all these figures, and remember, this is these are figures before the COVID, uh, which have a strong impact on the on the revenue figures. Uh, so by 2023, of course, the expectations for 2024 are to grow very strongly. So let me uh, show you some more some more figures like like this. I don't know if you can see it pretty well, but it gives you. Um, the trend and the trends in terms of arrivals of international tourism around the world. And as you can see, we reached a peak in 2019, just before COVID, um, we uh, reached uh, the 1.4 um, thousand millions um, uh, of tourists in the world. And we have COVID-19 in 2020. And as you can see, we have like a strong decline of the international tourism arrivals uh, that was around minus 72% in terms of uh, the uh, uh, descent of the number of international tourist arrivals. But one important point that I want to highlight to you is what happened from the 2020 to 2023. I mean, what happened, what has happened between the end of the COVID-19 and today. And what you can see is like a V a recovery. So that means that we reach a peak in 2019, we reach the trough in 2019, and then we are very, very closely to recover. Um, I hope, and everybody in the industry hopes that by 2024, the uh, number of uh, tourists uh, arrivals will surpass the uh, numbers in the, in the, in the, uh, from, 20, from the 2019. So we will be above 1.5 thousand um, uh, billions, uh, millions of, of tourism uh, arrivals, right? So to receive tourists is, is, is okay. It's, it's very, very, um, uh, very good for everybody, for countries, for business, for even for governments. But uh, you, you have to think in terms of uh, the receipts. I mean, how much money are we uh, generating in the tourism industry? And of course, you see a correlation between the number of arrivals, uh, the number of tourism, tourists that we receive and the dollars that we uh, receive. So as you can see, we reach a top of 1.487 um, 
billions, uh, American uh, dollars, billions in terms of receipts. Uh, then we have, as, as, as the COVID-19 impact all the economies, we uh, reduced by 63% to recover again in a V form to almost 1.5 uh, billion dollars around the world in terms of international tourism. So what, where are we now? I mean, in terms of recovery, as I, as I said, if we consider 2019 the 100%, I mean, the, the, the or reference in terms of the peak of the tourism industry historically, um, in 2023, I, I mean, talking about, uh, uh, in, I'm, I'm talking in, in, in a worldwide basis, right? We are about 88% uh, of the tourism uh, the, the world had in uh, 2019. So we are still have, by the end, this is, uh, the, these are provisional data from the, from the United Nations World, world Tourism Organization. So we uh, still have 12% to go to recover the levels uh, of arrivals in the international tourist uh, arrivals of, of uh, 2019. So we haven't recovered yet in global terms, although we have some regions, as you can see here, that they have already surpassed the 2019 uh, level. So we have countries, for example, you can see on, on the slide, like Middle East, Middle East is the only region in the world that have surpassed the 2019 COVID-19 impact. So that we are 22% uh, above, above the 2019 uh, peak of uh, tourism arrivals. So if you are located in Middle East, you are lucky because you are the only region in the world that has recovered from the impact of uh, COVID-19. Then we have Europe. Europe is very, very close to the recovery level of 2019. We are just 6% out of the uh, peak from the 2019. Of course, we all in Europe expect that 2024 will be above the uh, 2019 level. But uh, there, are, there are some other regions that are lag behind, like for example, Asia Pacific, they are still 35% behind the peak of the 2019. Um, and in terms of the world, uh, if, we, uh, um, if we aggregate all the uh, statistics around the world, the world, as you, as we, you already said, uh, saw in the, uh, in, the, in the previous slide, we are 12% behind the peak of, of 2019. Okay, so I, I, I got uh, some, yeah, we have a chat here. Okay, so we can only see the first slide at the moment. Yeah, that was your last. We so we haven't had any other. Yeah, it's it's working fine right okay. now. We, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just, I just uh, listen um, to a to a tone. Maybe uh, I thought it was uh, a message. So let me just uh, highlight what is happening in the Africa Middle East. Um, you know, this is the region uh, uh, the, uh, that uh, the United Nations World Tourism Organization uh, considers you are you are in. Um, so I just wanted to to highlight this this um, these developments in the region with Qatar and Arabia uh, Saudi Arabia um, with a very very strong performance in, uh, from January to December twenty twenty three. Uh, with Qatar growing 90 uh, 90 percent and uh, Saudi Arabia 50, 50, um, 56 percent in terms of uh, uh, of uh, arrivals uh, uh, in comparison with uh, the numbers in 2019. Uh, we also have of course some countries that are lagging behind in, in Syria you have Syria the case of Syria uh, maybe of course because of the of the war uh, and uh, the time it takes a country to recover from such uh, dramatic episodes. And um, you also have the case of um, uh, Morocco uh, with a strong development in, in the, uh, the tourism industry in the, last, in the last five to 10 years, Oman, Tanzania, Ethiopia. So you have overall very, very good, strong 
uh, grow, growth in, in the tourism industry in your, in your region. Uh, and as I said, um, uh, you are outperforming the rest of the regions in the, in the world. So just a couple of uh, more uh, graphs and uh, um, uh, figures to uh, finish this, this uh, section. You also have here the three key indicators uh, from the United Nations World Tourism Organizations. Um, this gives you um, a direct estimation of the GDP of tourism. This is the orange uh, line. It tells you that by the end of 2023, which as I told is uh, they are still provisional data. It will uh, the tourism industry will 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 represent the three point three percent of the world GDP. Uh, so this is absolutely uh, uh, well. Sorry, it's three point three trillions uh, of the U.S. dollars trillions uh, in terms of the GDP. So you have um, the tourism being uh, one of the top. Um, you know, main uh, industries uh, in, 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 in the world with this uh, contribution to the world GDP. You have uh, 1.6 trillion a provisional figure for 2023 export revenues from tourism. Uh, I cannot tell you now what other industry in the world is able to generate such an export revenue in the world. Um, maybe we have... Uh, um, the automobile industry or uh, some high-tech in the industry uh, maybe being uh, close to industry but not a bit in, in, in the, the tourism industry at the moment and the third very uh, key indicator for uh, you know understanding the importance of tourism around the world is the number of international tourist arrival which we already talked about in uh, 1.3 billions uh, of uh, tourists moving around the world by the end of 2023. What are the prospects for 2024? Well, these are the results of the United Nations World Tourism Organization Panel of Experts Survey that they uh, made in January 2024. And it's just... Um, the results, these show the results of uh, what is the opinion of the uh, professionals in the industry. And they go to the professional and they ask, what do you think is going to be uh, the future of uh, tourism in 2024? And as you can see, we have uh, around 70% if we sum up it much better and better. Um, which are considering that 2024 is going to be a very, very good year for the tourism industry. Of course, not everybody thinks the same. We have a small percentage of the professionals saying that the uh, tourism is going to be worse, 6%, or much worse, 0.4%, or the same, 28%. So. Uh, as I said, everybody and not every region, every country, every community can say the same. But what uh, we must highlight from this um, slide is that the uh, worldwide expectations for destinations in 2024 is to be better or much better. So that shows us how strong, how resilient is the tourism industry around the world. We have a strong um, diminution of revenues, so a very strong reduction of uh, the number of tourism, the, the number of tourists around the world. But then, as we can see from 2023 and 2024, we have a V-form um, recovery with strong numbers, again, in just in just, I, I want to highlight this, in just three, two years. So um, just for you to know uh, how strong, how resilient, and how competitive the tourism industry is performing around the world. So I think this is the last slide with the numbers. Uh, sorry for uh, uh, so many figures, but I think they were necessary to give you an idea of uh, the importance of the industry um, around the world and in your region. Um, 
what are the prospects again? What are the reasons? What are the factors that are going to impact the recovery uh, on the uh, growth of tourism in 2024? Well, as you can see, uh, professionals in the industry, uh, they tell us that uh, the economic the environment and the cost and in terms of transportation and accommodation are going to be the two main threats to growth and um, the recovery of tourism. So we have these two very, very important, I mean, important factors to focus on. One is the economic environment. Uh, of course, we are all know what are the risks with uh, the wars, the terrorist attacks, and all these different geopolitical uh, uh, backs and forths that we have in the world. But every time uh, television or the uh, any mass media uh, tells the world that uh, somebody is attacking uh, some other, or uh, we have a bomb there or a bomb there, or we have uh, any uh, climate-related uh, um, episode like you know a, a volcano explosion or a hurricane or whatever, uh, this is going to have uh, an impact on tourism. So this is the main threat and the main concern for tourism uh, professionals uh, that is going to jeopardize uh, uh, growth and um, recovery in 2024. And of course, we have to say uh, that inflation, uh, I mean, the rise in the prices, um, mainly I'm talking about the rise in the prices of uh, fuel, accommodation, uh, food, uh, this is also important, is going to threat um, uh, the, the recovery and growth of, of tourism. So, yes, uh, of course, tourism, uh, as we said in our first slide, is an industry where people move from one place to another. So people is always scary. I mean, uh, you, you can ask yourself, will you go to a place where there is a, a threat from, uh, you know, uh, uh, tourist attack or uh, uh, climate event or would you prefer to go to a more uh, quiet place uh, where you can be uh, you know without any uh, a, uh, any challenge uh, to your life or to any life-threatening event occurring right so we will of course prefer to go to a, a safe place and forget about the uh, risk risky places right so this is um, well, I mean, uh, this is the, the first uh, uh, reason for for uh, uh, concern for for the, for the professionals today. So let's move on a little bit. Okay, another photograph. This is <laughs> this is um, the main Spanish tourism fair uh, that we uh, celebrate every year by January or February. This is FITUR, the International um, uh, Tourism Fair. This is the second um, most important uh, tourism fair in, in the world. Uh, the first one being in um, in Berlin, I think. Um, the, so the second one is, is, is Madrid in Spain. And uh, we are the first, uh, we, ho we, we host the first fair in the world in terms of the tourism with the Americas. And so we have many, many countries uh, from America. Of course, we have very cultural um, uh, connections with uh, Latin America. Uh, so we are the first uh, market for uh, Latin America countries and operators to Europe. And um, it is uh, this year's um, uh, fair was absolutely a success with very, very strong numbers of professional contacts, uh, networking, and uh, business deals close in the fur. Uh, um, you know, they, they beat the, re the records from the last uh, uh, 20 or 30 years. So this is also a very, very good indicator of what is happening in the tourism, uh, in the tourism industry. And of course, it's a very, very good sign of recovery of the industry uh, in terms of how many attendees came to the fair in, in Madrid, uh, how many deals were closed in the in the fair. So uh, let me talk a little bit about the benefits and the challenge uh, 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 about tourism. Because of course, we are always uh, 
you know, trying to, uh, I mean, we, we know, I mean, not, not as a student or not as a professor, but as a professional or, or maybe as a government official, uh, should we develop tourism? Should we uh, uh, make a, a bet for, for tourism? Should we concentrate all resources in this, this industry? So it, it, everything depends, of course, you know, on the benefits that we are trying to to obtain in, in, in the exchange of, of, of developing this industry. So here you have some of the main benefits that I would say uh, maybe around the world uh, you can get by developing tourism and developing tourism businesses around the world. So you have a very, uh, an industry that is a very, very strong in terms of the economic impact. So anytime a city, a community, or a country develops tourism. So you have a very a strong economic impact um, in terms of income distribution. Um, so that means that tourism is going to help you, I mean, your city, your country, your community to make a more fair distribution or, of income uh, in the population. You are going to create uh, many, many more uh, employment opportunities for your people, for society. Uh, tourism is also a good sign uh, for investments. So um, every time you hear the word tourism, you should be also hearing the word investment, um, infrastructure investment, infrastructure development. They are always connected. So that by developing the uh, tourism industry, you are helping to develop uh, investments and infrastructures uh, in your country and your community. Um, tourism also helps to uh, uh, preserve your heritage, to develop your cultural um, preservation uh, programs and, and to uh, make uh, your cultural about uh, a, a valuable asset because tourism is uh, uh, makes heritage your distinction uh, your cultural dimensions are going to be uh, the thing that tourists want to see the the, 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 the cultural uh, things are, are are the type of things tourists are interested in uh, you are um, going to preserve you are going to uh, make also you know, strong um, investments in keeping your heritage healthy and, um, and, and, and good, right? Um, uh, and of course, another, this is the last but not the least uh, benefit of tourism has to be with the cultural and the social exchange. So uh, it helps you to have connections with other people, different cultures, different perspectives, um, so that improves, I think, your mutual understanding of each other. Uh, and this is also highly valuable in, in the world of today uh, to get to know the uh, other perspectives of the world, other cultures. And, and uh, tourism, no doubt, uh, contributes to mutual understanding and mutual, mutual knowledge. So this is a more intangible type of benefit but of course, uh, are highly valuable uh, benefits from, from, from tourism. But of course, not all uh, are benefits when we talk about uh, tourism. We also have some challenges. Um, and I'm talking, of course, about that type of things that we don't like about tourism. Uh, we don't like as, you know, as uh, residents of a community, of, uh, as the population of a country or a city, because we suffer from mass tourism. So this is why in academics we call over tourism. Uh, so we have, uh, uh, depending of course in the, in the city or in the, in the region, we have many places suffering from tourism. We are suffering from the uh, economic uh, uh, inflection, I mean, the price inflection because of mass tourism. We are suffering from a highly uh, economic impact because of the uh, uh, so many tourisms coming to your to your place, and so that generates a lot of challenges in terms of sustainability, mainly. Um, so, 
I would say this is maybe the first or maybe the uh, it is between the three main challenges that tourism has to uh, provide an answer in the in the in the next uh, in the next five to ten years how to overcome how to provide solutions to the mass tourism uh, sustainability problems right so we also have uh, challenges regarding the uh, technology rate of innovation i mean we are having such a fast such a uh, swift uh, technology adoption adoption rate and disruption in many cases regarding uh, technologies and data and, and all the uh, innovation that is uh, coming up to uh, is coming up to 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 the tourism industry that uh, we have many mainly small businesses that are being left behind. So how can we keep um, uh, um, the rhythm of technological disruption, that um, the adoption of new technologies, the adoption of new uh, innovation, uh, uh, innovative technologies, right? So this is this is a, a very uh, key challenge for everybody in the in the tourism industry. No matter if you are big, you are small, you are a government, you are um, uh, whatever uh, actor or player you are in the industry you will feel challenged by technology. As I said, uh, we have another challenge in terms of environmental degradation and climate change. Not every place suffers the, you know, the, the same degree of impact, but these are also the, the, the type of challenges that we in the, in the industry uh, are, are suffering worldwide. Um, as I said before, uh, we are an industry that depends on having a good political climate, uh, a good stable um, economic environment, so that we foster uh, international um, um, tourists to feel confident and to feel safe and come to visit us. So anytime we show the world that we have some risks, so or we can be a vulnerability for someone. Um, you just have to consider that's going to have an impact on somebody in some country, and they are going to choose another place. So uh, we have to be very, very um, um, uh, conscious of, of how or uh, social, political, economic environment. Uh, how, how stable and how safe uh, we are able to build this environment in order to uh, deliver a good um, uh, a good context for for international tourists to come, right? And of course, we have responsible tourism as another challenge. Uh, how to um, be responsible uh, not only for the tourists that visit us, but also for our communities, for our people for our young people as you, for our old people, for the uh, people living in the city centers, that they have maybe some problems to keep up with the prices. So we have to think um, in terms of the social impacts of tourism. And this is also a very huge challenge um, uh, for the coming years in, in tourism. So as you can see, we have very big benefits for tourism, no doubt. I mean, the, you know, we, we, these are the benefits that have been demonstrated around the world, but also we have many, um, uh, I, I, don't, I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say threats, but, uh, but I would say challenges, and they have a cost for the communities and the places where tourism uh, holds strong, and that we will have, of course, to think on solutions at the same time that we take the benefits of tourism. So uh, another very nice photo from um, one of the uh, uh, luxury hotels in, in Spain. Uh, we have many, many luxury hotels in, uh, in Spain, in Madrid. Uh, we hold some uh, very luxury and uh, good, very nice hotels. But of course, they are spread uh, uh, across uh, all the country, uh, in the cities, in the coast, in the islands. So if you want to focus in the luxury business, 
um, just consider Spain as one of the, uh, the best places in Europe um, to focus on, on, this, on this industry. Uh, let me give you an overall idea of what are the different players that make up the uh, tourism industry. Because I, as I said, um, tourism industry is not just uh, to accommodate people in a hotel or just to um, uh, deliver an experience in, in, in terms of food and beverage, but uh, we have, uh, let's, let's call it a value chain that uh, starts every time you uh, try to decide where to go. So we need to uh, provide tourists with information. Um, uh, where, 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 are, where are the places that fit your expectations? Uh, what are the attractions that you should consider? So um, there are people in the industry whose, um, whose job is to uh, create uh, a tourism product. So a tourism product is the combination of many, many different types of uh, things, of operations. It's a complex uh, product because you have to deal with many different suppliers. Um, so we call this type of agents uh, the two per, uh, tour operators. So they are the ones that, uh, that configure uh, the tourist uh, product. They, they package uh, your... Uh, your transport, they package your accommodation, they package uh, your uh, itinerary, your attractions, uh, so that uh, it fits uh, it fits well your your expectations and your 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 desires. So this is a very very important type of of players uh, that we have in the tourism industry. Of course, we also have the uh, transportation players. So we are talking about all the different types of modes of transport from the uh, airlines to the uh, uh, ground transportation uh, to the um, sea transportation to railways. So we have many different types of transportation companies that they have somehow to connect with the tour operators to offer that uh, uh, um, that uh, uh, tourism experience in a place, right? So we, we need the transportation companies to bring people uh, within a place and to uh, de uh, deliver these uh, people back to their, to their or, uh, original uh, places, right? So that's why transportation companies are also highly, highly relevant for, for tourism. Of course, we have the accommodation um, sector. Um, uh, accommodation sector is one of the sectors that is having a very strong innovation at the moment because we uh, no longer have the traditional hotel uh, type of accommodation uh, alone in the tourism sector. We also have uh, quite a different array of uh, providers of accommodation. We have um, uh, the PMP, the peer-to-peer -peer type of accommodation. We have holiday rentals. We have plenty, plenty of different types of accommodation um, that try to fulfill your your um, your experience uh, expectations as as a tourist. Um, of course, once you travel to a place, once you accommodate in a place, then you need to eat. And you need to drink. That is fundamental. But not not only because you need to survive as a human by eating and drinking, but because food and beverage has become one of the most highly demanded and uh, most uh, uh, highly growing industries or sectors in the tourism industry. Because uh, we have uh, many, many tourists in the world asking to have a food and beverage experience wherever they go. So we have uh, this food and beverage sector as one of the uh, most uh, growing, uh, highly growing the, uh, sectors in the, in the tourism at the moment. And the expectation is to grow even higher in the, in, the, in, the next, in the next years. Of course, you also need to dedicate your leisure time in the destination. And then this is where the attractions and activities 
come into play. We visit museums, uh, we visit uh, uh, visitor centers, we visit uh, natural places. Uh, we like to visit the Eiffel Tower when we go to Paris, or we love to go to the beaches in Spain or to the rural uh, and natural landscapes in um, whatever place in the world or the natural or national parks in United States. So these are the type of attractions and activities that the destinations wants to offer uh, tourists. And this is also a highly important uh, type of uh, sector that we have to keep in mind when we talk about uh, tourism. And last but not least, we have all the tourism related support services. We have all that types of services that uh, support the tourists once in a, in a place, like uh, the banking sector, for example, or you have um, the services provided, provided by the uh, local authorities or the information uh, for tourists. So these are the type of services that complement your experience in a destination. And they are also as important as the other ones because um, you cannot avoid to uh, have to go to a ATM in some city and pick up your money. So you need that type of service to be working um, uh, in the right way and uh, give you the customer service that you deserve. So, or you, you, you know, you uh, get into a taxi uh, in a city and you want the taxi driver to speak your language or maybe in English, uh, you don't want to fight uh, discussing the, the price of the of the uh, of the taxi uh, uh, in the airport and that type of things, right? So this is uh, also a very very important type of, of services. And of course, all these the different type of sectors that make up the uh, uh, tourism value chain, uh, they are uh, taking place in a place. Okay, so they is they are taking place in a destination. So destination are places. And sometimes the tourist decides to visit a place, not because uh, an accommodation, not because an attraction, but because a destination. But when you visit maybe Madrid or you visit Paris or New York, you are not thinking maybe about the hotel or about the museum. You are thinking about your destination. You are thinking about the idea of New York, the Madrid, or Paris. So this is important also. And this is more in the public uh, policy type of, of, of management, but uh, this, is, this is also in, an, an important um, sector, let's call it sector in, in the tourism industry. Uh, I, I, I mean the, all, all the things regarding the destination, how the services are working, how the how the destination, the place uh, welcomes um, tourists, how uh, people, um, uh, I mean, the population, the community in a place um, admits or doesn't admit the tourists. So the, it, it is all of these type of things is, are in relation with the destination. And I also wanted to point out the importance of the technology the transformation and the data, because anything of, I mean, all these type of activities, all these types of sectors and uh, players uh, uh, wouldn't be able to, 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 to run their services, to run their, their, their uh, to provide you with the experience without technology. And technology and data is gaining very uh, a strong, uh, 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 impact in the in the in the in the in the functioning of of the tourism industry. So this is a more transversal type of of sector. Of course, we have uh, um, uh, a technology industry, a data industry that we have to uh, keep in close contact with uh, the tourism players because they are going to provide us as as players or as destinations with a type of support, with a type of tools that we need to uh, deliver our services as uh, the expectation of the tourist. So uh, maybe 10 years ago, 
uh, I wouldn't say this, this, this thing. I wouldn't have highlighted uh, the importance of technology as I'm doing now. But uh, if you are going to be a professional of the tourism industry in the next, let's say, five to 10 years, uh, let me tell you, let me uh, give you this recommendation that you will have to learn about technology transformation and data, because this is going to impact your profession uh, in terms that um, are unimaginable, okay? So every one of these uh, players, uh, they are having different trends, different uh, innovation uh, driven uh, transformations that I just want to point you out very, very, very fast. So for example, in the uh, uh, tour operator travel industry, we are uh, seeing uh, a strong trend towards the personalized traveling, the sustainability uh, type of practices and the digital transformation. As I just tell you, um, every player in the industry is strongly impacted by technology, but maybe the tour operators are one of the most highly impacted by technology and digital transformation. I don't mean this is this is the only one, but this is one of the strongest impact, impacted uh, sectors in the travel industry. Um, what about the transportation? Well, we have uh, uh, a trend towards the eco-friendly transportation modes of uh, of operation. Um, uh, we have also the impact of sustainability. You will have seen in many different uh, cities in the world how the cities are. Um, are bringing the electrical vehicles, the bicycles, and all these types of P2P, peer-to-peer -peer transportation, new modes of transportation. So this is going to impact uh, very heavily on the industry, on the transportation industry in the, in the next few years. And of course, we have um, uh, high investments uh, being directed to, towards advanced technologies that make... Uh, the transportation a more eco-friendly and a more customizable type of, of, of transport in industry. Uh, what about the accommodation? Well, as I, I, we, we told, uh, I told you just, um, just uh, before, we have alternative accommodations coming up to the market. We have not only the hotels uh, and the traditional ways of uh, accommodating tourists, but also we have new entrants to the market. We have the peer-to-peer, -peer, we have the vacational rentals. Uh, so this is um, uh, shaking uh, very heavily the accommodation sector. Um, we have a sector in the accommodation that is making a big, big effort to conduct sustainable practices all around the accommodation uh, experience. And of course, we have new products coming up in the market, into the market in the accommodation sector. For example, how we can uh, provide an experience to the remote workers, uh, which is um, you know increasingly an important type of, of clients for the accommodation sector. Um, in the in the food and beverages, of course, uh, as I told you, we have a very strong growth of all the things related to culinary gastronomy experiences. Um, there are places in the world that they are already uh, getting specialized at food and beverage destinations. Um, so this is changing the landscape of the uh, tourism industry in many places. And we have a lot of technology also coming up uh, into, the, into the food industry. Uh, in terms of the attractions, uh, we have a strong uh, movement towards the experiential tourism, the integration of technologies, uh, for example, all these uh, virtual reality or augmented reality type of uh, technologies coming up uh, to the to the attractions and activities uh, industry. And of course, again, the sustainability practices on how to make the activities uh, more, even more when we are talking about mass tourism sustainable. And in terms of the supporting services, we have, of course, uh, the digital transformation uh, challenge uh, showing very, very, very strongly. The customization and the safety and health also as, as the main drivers of innovation in this, in this industry. 
very uh, nice uh, photograph again uh, this is uh, our university or uh, universidad nebrija this is the uh, reception of our campus uh, in madrid uh, it's one of the three campuses in in madrid city and this is where the tourism um, uh, school is located so if you feel um uh, that uh, you feel like coming to Madrid or coming to study to our university, maybe this is one is, is going to be the first uh, uh, contact point that you you are going to have with with us in in Madrid. So let me finish uh, my presentation already. I I, I know I have uh, um, uh, uh, exceeded the time, but uh, let me go very briefly to talk about the tourism studies. As you can, as you have seen in the presentation, tourism. Is a absolutely global industry. It's a highly complex uh, industry in terms of the different type of players, the the, the things they do. Um, uh, it is a highly uh, uh, impacted uh, industry by innovation. So we have innovation changing things very fast in the industry. So you have to try to choose your next university, your next tourism study as a provider um, uh, thinking ahead not just on your undergraduate studies or your bachelor degree but also how you are going to make progress in the future right so i would suggest just to keep this slide in your mind uh, you of course are going to choose an undergraduate a university or an undergraduate program uh, of course you will start by 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 the by the beginning with your bachelor degree in tourism or in tourism and hospitality or in tourism and business management whatever the name is i will i will tell you of course about the nebrija university um, uh, undergraduate studies which which ones are, are we offering at the moment but you also need to think how this university or, or what universities are going to provide you with the next steps. The next step after you finish the four year uh, undergraduate study in tourism is uh, the, your professional specialization. So you are going to need to keep thinking about your next professional accreditations, your specialized specialization certifications. So, uh, Maybe uh, you can choose, for example, like Nebrija, a uh, university that can offer you both the undergraduate or your professional or specialization certifications. Uh, and of course, you need to think ahead in your graduate studies. And you will, you will, you will need maybe in the next five, six, seven years to think about your master's degree. And uh, the master's degree is not an undergraduate degree is not uh, an overall or wide scope type of program It's more a professional uh, thinking program It's more uh, a program where you are going to gain the skills for management and the skills maybe for um, you know, be an executive or uh, uh, someone responsible in a functional area or, an in, or, or a type of sector in the industry. So it's going to help you to make this type of jump uh, or, or progression in your career. And uh, you have to also to think uh, what are the different options uh, that you have uh, to, 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 to think ahead in, in terms of your graduate studies. And of course, many, uh, I mean, maybe some of you are thinking about, you know, having an uh, academic uh, uh, re or research or teaching career in the future. And then you will uh, focus on choosing a, a doctoral study in an university. So as you can see, uh, there are different levels, different steps, and of course, different universities. Some will offer you one type of um, uh, specialization, one type of uh, level of uh, of, uh, of skills, uh, some undergraduate, some graduate, some this type, that type. So what do we do on Eberichan University? In Eberichan University, we offer you with the full array of uh, tourism studies. So we can offer you, of course, the uh, starting of your career, the degree in tourism management. So this is a four years degree in tourism. We are going to provide you with uh, 
the uh, knowledge that you need to start your career. We're going to give you the skills that you need to uh, have a complex idea of the sector. Um, we are going to uh, bring you uh, to real companies. We are going to offer you uh, every type of connections with the professionals and the sectors in Spain, which is, as you can see, the second country in the world in terms of the tourism industry and the first country in the world in terms of competitiveness. So Spain is the most competitive uh, country in the world in terms of the tourism industry. So you are coming to a university in a city, Madrid, which is uh, absolute best practice in the development of the tourism industry. And uh, you are going to be in a prestigious uh, school of tourism to start your career, right? So four years of study, you are going to uh, be uh, one of the best professionals in the tourism, uh, in the tourism industry maybe in Europe, or maybe I, I wouldn't say in the world, but I'm, I'm sure in Europe, uh, in terms of your understanding of your sector, understanding of the practices and having the experience in your internship to work with the leading companies of the uh, uh, tourist industry in Spain. You can choose instead of uh, a degree in tourism to choose a double degree. We offer three different double degrees where tourism is uh, one of the uh, this double uh, offering. So we have tourism and marketing bachelors. So this is our five years instead of four. Um, we have, uh, this is uh, uh, delivering five years uh, in a five years program. We have uh, creation administration and business management, in business management. Um, and you can do in one more year, uh, uh, the tourism uh, program. So you finish in these five years of um, of uh, education, the the two the two degrees, and we also have for those more uh, focus on the data technology thing. We have the business analytics bachelor together with the bachelor in tourism, and again, this is a five years program. Once you finish your bachelor, either as a single degree or as a double degree, you can uh, continue your uh, um, uh, education in, in Ebrija University, in the School of Tourism. We are offering two highly specialized uh, master's uh, programs for professionals. One in transformation and data application applied to tourism. As I told you, this is fundamental. Uh, in the development of your career. Uh, it doesn't matter in what player, in what type of agent you will work, either in the accommodation, in the operation, in the um, attractions, or in the destination. You are going to need to know about data, about transformation, and about technology. So this is one year master program um, online, delivered in English, and you can uh, make this program compatible with your professional uh, activity. And the same goes for the manage, the second master, the management of a smart tourist destinations for those who wants to focus on the destination management. But again, this, <laughs> this second master is a master highly focused on the technology and the uh, transformation and data, uh, but not, not for business, but for destination. And for those who want to develop uh, an academic uh, or, and research um, career, we offer uh, the last and top level of education, which is the doctorate program in tourism, which has the, um, uh, let's say, uh, the differentiation to be an inter-university program uh, with other uh, universities in Spain. Uh, so th this is uh, a highly demanding uh, academic program, of course, uh, but you can share this program together with 35, I think is 35 more uh, um, uh, tourism of a school doctorate programs in Spain. So as you can see, this is the full array, the full um, package of education that we can offer you from the uh, really beginning of the uh, edu your education till the uh, professional, um, uh, the professional and doctorate programs, if you wish. 
Uh, this is our university in Madrid. As I said, we have three different campuses. The one in the, on the left is the uh, uh, campus in, uh, we call it Madrid Princesa, which is in the city center of Madrid, um, close to the main uh, highlights and the main attractions of the city. So you will feel absolutely comfortable in this campus. Um, it's a campus um, with a, a high percentage of international students from all around the world, so highly international. You will have a good a, a good cross cultural environment if you also wish that uh, type of of experience. We are a private university, as I said. We enroll about uh, thirteen more than thirteen thousand students a year. Um, and well, we are a, a university uh, heavily focused on the relationships with the business side of the industry. So you will feel from the year one how you get highly connected with professionals. Many of our professors are not only academics, but they are also uh, people from the industry. So they are going to teach you not, not only the theory, but also the practical um, part of the, of the things, right? So um, you are going to have a very strong connections with the business environment, the tourism business environment of the city of Madrid and uh, of the uh, Spain country. And this, this will be my last one. Uh, the profiles of the future or the most highly demanded job profiles. Uh, this is my opinion, of course, uh, this is my bet for the future. Um, of course, you can focus on whatever you, you, you want. <laughs> I don't want to change your opinion. I don't want to, uh, to, 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 to change your, your, your trajectory if you already have one. But these are going to be uh, the most highly demanded in the, in the next few years. We, we feel this from our relationship with the business side. And uh, we have plenty of demands for young people having a digital business profile, a people who knows about transformational data, people who knows about customer experience, people that is um, uh, concerned with sustainability and they know how to make a sustainability, uh, uh, the management uh, framework for, for a business and how the uh, business or an organization can bring sustainability to the culture. Uh, so this is also very, very important. We have uh, many destinations uh, around the world uh, asking for young people who knows how to uh, uh, manage destinations, how to promote destinations in the world, how to bring technology to destinations. And of course, let me say, we are in a sector that has a high demand for entrepreneurs. So if you are an entrepreneur or you feel yourself with an entrepreneurial kind of mindset, you are in the right industry because opportunities for innovation are absolutely uh, big. And uh, those who know how to um, seize these opportunities and uh, benefit from uh, new markets, new places, and new products are going to have a, a very nice future in, in tourism. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'll leave my presentation to the host if you want to have some of these slides uh, in, your, in your possession. And uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm open to answer any of your questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, that was very insightful and uh, very interesting, uh, honestly. Uh, so we can move now to the Q&A. So if any of the attendees have any questions that they'd like to ask, uh, please drop them down in the uh, Q&A chat and we'll be answering them uh, accordingly. So uh, just to get things going a bit uh, until uh, everyone just kind of gets their get their qu questions together. So um, I'd like I'd like to ask uh, what kind of advice would you give to students who would like to study tourism and pursue a tourism career? Are there any tips and tricks that you can give uh, to students? 
Yes. Um, well, there are many, in fact, uh, but uh, I will say that I, I, I will highlight this, this um, maybe this, this slide, this slide that uh, I, I focus on. Yeah. Uh, tourism is no longer that uh, type of traditional industry that we were used to, uh, let's say, in a, de in a decade ago, right? Um, maybe 10 years ago, uh, if we talk about tourism, we all have in mind uh, a reception in a hotel or somebody in a, in a counter or somebody in an airport uh you know delivering some service to a customer so this has changed absolutely uh very much um uh, to reason of course it's a still this type of traditional um uh, type of industry but um in the last 10 years tourism has developed absolutely new uh sources of of, of opportunities for for young people and i want to point out this because um, they have added all the uh, professions related with the digital business, the, the, the technology things, uh, the customer experience. So they, they, this has opened uh, radically new opportunities for a career that maybe 10 years ago, um, uh, young people haven't even thought about, right? So that's why I wanted to highlight this because this opens the eyes to to many people because uh, maybe we we bring a, a very as I said a very traditional perspective of the industry and uh, what we what we feel in as as, as as university and because of our relationship with with the with the industry every day we have a strong demand of these new job profiles uh, associated as I said with the digital. Uh, technology, data, uh, sustainability, green, green uh, industry, customer experience type of, of, of profiles that uh, young people should think about very, very carefully. They should consider at least. Uh, and of course, the, the, the skills are different, right? In these new professions, you need to be, you, you need maybe to move more to the technical side of the things, but you also have to keep a strong knowledge uh, about your industry. So you are going to be someone, once you finish your bachelor in tourism, you are going to be someone that has a strong knowledge or a strong specialization in the tourism industry. But at the same time, you are going to have the skills needed to develop your career in a digital uh, in, in a digital and technological environment, which is which is key for the next for the next decade, decade, right? Yes, exactly. Sounds great. Uh, so we've got a couple of questions here. Uh, so the first question is from from Chris. Uh, he was asking, uh, what is the career path of someone with a degree in uh, tourism? Uh, I, I believe you've touched upon that a bit within the slide, but is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, let me come back to, to the itinerary. Let's call it itinerary. Um, this is a typical itinerary in your, in your career uh, or your academic uh, career in, in tourism. You will start, of course, by a degree. Uh, sorry, for a, a bachelor, an undergraduate uh, program in, in tourism. There is different options. There are a, an option, uh, let's, let's, let's say more general, uh, where you are more focused on the different and all the tourism um, activities. You, you, you don't get a specialization in accommodation, in, I mean, hospitality or tour operation or attractions. You, you, you get an overall an overall overview and a specialization in the full industry. That's what I would recommend, right? Uh, in terms of your your bachelor, right? Uh, to have as as broad as possible um, knowledge and experience in the in the in the whole tourism industry, and then uh, uh, think about your graduate uh, next step program. Maybe after one, two, or three years of working experience, 
to get enrolled in a graduate uh, program, uh, a master's degree, uh, where you are going to focus on and getting your specialization. And uh, of course, you can uh, maybe uh, get the specialization in hospitality or in destinations or in technology or in customer experience, but you already have accumulated some working experience, which is good because it will help you uh, make a better decision. Uh, so that's why I don't recommend uh, to get enrolled in a master's degree uh, just right after you you finish your 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 bachelor, right? Uh, but to get you know some some working experience. I I mean this week I have an interview with with a student who wanted to get enrolled in the master's program just the the year after having finished the undergraduate. And I say, hey, you, you better do, do, don't do that. You're, you're not going to, you know, uh, uh, seize all the benefits of, of a master's degree because the master's degree is more uh, focused on the on, on professional profiles. So you better gain some um, uh, professional experience before getting into the graduate, into the graduate program where you are going to have your idea, ideas more, more clear and you are going to be able to benefit uh, the most, right? And between your graduate and your graduate the students, there are a full array of different professional specializations, accreditations in the different uh, sectors of the industry. So you can get specializations in data management, in customer experience, in hospitality management, you can want to become a director of a hotel, for example. So you, you can get that type of, of uh, professional accreditations if, if you wish. It depends, of course, in the career. As I said, this is a highly complex industry. There are plenty of opportunities um, for, for personal and professional development. And uh, that's why the first step I recommend is to... Uh, to uh, um, to 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 study a bachelor's degree that is more general than, than specific. So the, the more general, the better, and uh, get a uh, uh, general overview of the of the industry, uh, so that you can uh, finish your your undergraduate program with a clear uh, idea of where you want to focus in in the in the next in your next steps. Hope this this answered the question. Yes, excellent. And I've, I think you've already, you've also touched upon his uh, second question where he was asking uh, if, uh, like, what are the practical skills that are needed for someone to succeed in this industry? Uh, so I think you've already mentioned a few things, a uh, few points, but if there's anything else to add uh, in terms of practical skills that would be needed, uh, that would be great. Uh Maybe I will highlight that, uh, you know, tourism industry is an industry of the experience, right? So we work to deliver uh, the best possible uh, customer experience. It doesn't matter if you work for a transportation company or accommodation company or a tour operation company. You are all the time thinking about how to deliver the best customer experience. So practical skills, regarding ex uh, customer experience is a fundamental skill uh, in, uh, in, in tourism. There are people that, you know, they have more, um, uh, I, I know how to, how to call it, but uh, more uh, uh, people uh, uh, networking or, 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 or a personality that is more prone to um, the contact with people, uh, the attention, the care, of people um, and other people that has not developed this type of skills that they will have to develop this type of skill because um, unless you focus very strongly on the technology or data transformation part of the business uh, you, you in the in the tourism industry you will have uh, at any time a close contact with your with your customer right and um, you know, we have a customer in the industry that is changing all the time. Uh, we have people that is G digital, like the young people who wants an environment uh, 
that is more digital. I want, you know, you, you know better than me if you are John, uh, that you want to 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 have an environment where I can make all the transactions, all the reservations, or the payments through my mobile device. And then we have more uh, old people, let's say, that is not uh, such used to the to the digital things, and they want more the personal contact, the interact, the interaction, the human interaction. So we need to accommodate to all these different types of of, of interactions, of profiles. Uh, and uh, or or graduate uh, people or 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 alumni is people that has these practical skills, you know, uh, either digital or human in capacities for for interaction and to deliver the experience. Right. So I will highlight this one. But also, as I said, we are moving to an industry where having a good understanding, a good knowledge of the industry. Uh, of the of tourism is fundamental, but you also need to add to your profile, to your skills, those technical skills that you talk about. The technology, the transformation, the data. You have to be careful because your value, your value as an employee, your value as a, um, as a future professional, uh, many times is going to depend on this type of technical skills. So you better think carefully, as I said, where and how are you going to acquire this uh, type of technical skills uh, if you want if you want to make a, a, a let's say a fast a fast progress in the industry. Okay, so uh, moving on to the next question, uh, someone would like to know uh, the tuition fees at uh, Nebriha University for international. Uh, students. Uh, maybe we can start with the fees for a bachelor degree, for instance. You can uh, complete, uh, you can enroll in a bachelor degree in tourism. Uh, you don't need a bachelor degree in tourism. Um, uh, I mean, it's not a prerequisite for, for getting enrolled in a master's degree in Nebriha. Okay. But you need a background either on the technical side or in the business side to enroll in the program, but not necessarily uh, to be a, um, someone uh, with, a, with a tourism uh, background or professional uh, background in tourism. Yeah. Sounds good. And uh, yeah, it's just going back to the first question regarding the tuition fees. Uh, can you give us an idea about the tuition fees? Uh, tourism fees... Uh... <laughs> I'm not the one responsible for this. Uh, maybe uh, I can uh, direct you to the uh, people responsible for for the fees. Uh, I would say that uh, just to summarize my my thing about this is uh, they are highly, highly, highly competitive for the for the value that uh, we deliver in the in the school of tourism. I mean, if com in comparison with um, other countries in in europe um just think that um, we are a department of tourism we are not a business department who delivers a tourism specialization we are not that type so we are talking 100 percent, 24 hours seven days a week about tourism we are not going to talk to you about business or economics and then you will have a subject in tourism no no we are 100% tourism. So you are going to feel tourism from the first day to the last day. So that makes a huge difference because we have students coming from business schools or from business or economics um, related type of, of, of studies. And they say, wow, I got surprised because in my previous uh, university or school, they didn't know anything about tourism, but the, the, the bachelor was in tourism. Well, we, we just have to reason in one subject or two subjects. So that means a very, very few credits talking about tourism. Okay. And this is not our case. We are 100% tourism industry. So you start having a strong uh, contact uh, in terms of academics and business with tourism from the first day, as I said, to the last day. And that makes a, a huge difference. 
And uh, that's why I said, in terms of the value we, we deliver to the other students in tourism, we are highly competitive. So we are a very, very good choice. Anyway, if you want to know exactly the fees, just uh, leave your your email and I will ask uh, or... Uh, we can, we can you can all, always get in or, touch with us as well or, and or we're going to be yeah. able to assist you. Yeah, yeah of, uh, of course. Uh, all right, I guess uh, we can end here for today. Thank you very much for your time, uh, Professor Navarro. Again, that was very insightful. And uh, hopefully um, we will see a lot of students uh, enrolling in the tourism program. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, we also have one more question. Uh, you, uh, yeah, so basically regarding this presentation and the whole... Um, uh, master class will actually is actually recorded and will be available on or on all our uh, platforms so you can watch it uh, or rewatch it again uh, on our website and youtube channel so you would definitely have the presentation uh, uh, already on there so uh, if you ever needed any help accessing uh, the recording please do reach out to us and we'll definitely uh, help you out very good. So thank you for your time and your attention. We are, of course, open arms to all of you, and we will be absolutely happy to welcome you in Madrid for your uh, studies in tourism. Of course, of course. Thank you very much, Professor, and uh, wishing you all uh, a great day ahead. Okay, the same to you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.